Hello everyone, I am Shyam Pasari and welcome to ASIN Academy. Today we will be discussing that how many types of numbers are there or rather I would say that in how many ways you can classify all the numbers. Now as far as the topic number system is concerned the classification of numbers is very important because if you don't know the difference between a natural number and a whole number then you can land up on a completely different answer and you can lose those easy marks so without wasting any further time let's begin with the topic. Now before diving into the classification of numbers let us first understand what does the word number itself means. Word number is basically a representation of a quantity and nothing else. So now let's begin with the classification of the numbers. Now our first classification is between positive and negative numbers. Now the numbers which are greater than and equal to zero are known as positive numbers and the numbers which are less than zero are known as negative numbers. Symbol of the positive number is the plus sign and the symbol for the negative number is the minus sign. Example for positive number is 5 and example for negative number is minus 5. Now you have noticed that before the positive number we have not applied any symbol but before the negative number we have applied the minus sign that is because if a number is a positive number then we don't have to give any symbol before it it is directly treated as a positive number but if you have to represent a negative number then this minus symbol must be there because without this symbol this number will be treated as a positive number so we have to apply a minus symbol before every negative number. Now let's move on to our next classification. So our next classification is between real numbers and imaginary numbers. So let's first check what are real numbers. Now real numbers are those numbers which can be represented on a number line. A number line is a line which stretches from minus infinity to plus infinity and in which you can represent all the positive and negative numbers in a sequence. So a number line is divided at the number 0 and the numbers to the right of the number line are positive and the numbers to the left of the number line is taken as negative. All the numbers like 1, 1 1.5 minus 3 and so on all are real numbers which can be represented on the number line. Now let's move on to our next part that is imaginary numbers. Now imaginary numbers are those which cannot be represented on a number line. Under imaginary numbers only the square root of all the negative numbers comes. So square root of minus 1 minus 2 and so on are taken as imaginary numbers and square root of minus 1 is represented as i which is known as iota. If square root of minus 1 is represented as iota then square root of minus 2 is represented as 2 iota and so on. Now imaginary numbers are beyond the preview of most of the MBA entrance exam but you should know what is the difference between a real number and an imaginary number. Now real numbers can be further divided into two types rational and irrational. Rational numbers are those numbers which can be represented in the form of p by q where q is not equal to 0. Since the numbers can be represented as a form of a ratio, that's why the numbers are called as the rational numbers. The examples of the rational number are minus 2, 1.7, 3.5 and so on. Now all these numbers can be represented in the form of p by q because I can represent minus 2 as minus 2 by 1, 1 1.7 as 17 by 10 and 3.5 by 35 by 10 and all are in the form of p by q and none of their q are equal to 0. Let's move on to the second part that is irrational numbers. So irrational numbers are those which cannot be represented in the form of p by q. So some of the examples of irrational number are pi, root 2, root 3 plus 1 and so on. Now rational numbers can further be subdivided into two parts that are integers and fractions. Now let's check what are integers. So the rational numbers which do not have a decimal part or a fractional part are known as integers. So minus 3, 0, 1 all are integers because they do not have any decimal or fractional part. Now integers can further be subdivided into two parts that are positive integers and negative integers. 
all the integers that are greater than or equal to 0 are considered as positive integers and all the integers which are less than 0 are considered as negative integers. Now let's move on to our second part that is fractions. So fractions are basically those numbers which contain either a decimal part in it or are represented in the form of p by q where p is not a multiple of q. So examples of fractions are 1.2, 3.5, 5 by 2 and so on. Now you may have noticed that 5 by 2 is the form of p by q and 5 is not a multiple of 2. You can also represent 5 by 2 in the form of 2, 1 by 2 where 2 is the quotient on dividing 5 upon 2, 1 is the remainder and 2 is the divisor and this kind of representation is known as mixed fraction. Now there are two other kind of fractions that are proper and improper. So the definition of proper fraction is that if p is greater than q then it is called as a proper fraction and if p is less than q then it is known as an improper fraction. So 7 by 3 is an example of proper fraction and 3 by 7 is an example of improper fraction. Now positive integers have a further subclassification which are whole number and natural number. Now in the whole number all the positive integers are included that are 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on and in natural number we have all the positive integers from 1, 2, 3 and so on. So the only difference between a whole number and a natural number is that in a whole number the positive integer 0 is included and in natural number the positive integer 0 is not included. Let's move on to our next classification. So in our next classification we have even numbers and odd numbers. The numbers which can be represented in the form of 2k are known as even numbers where k is a whole number. So all the numbers like minus 4, minus 2, 0, 4, 6 and so on all are considered as even numbers. Now let's move on to our second part that is odd numbers. So the numbers which can be represented in the form 2k plus minus 1 are known as odd numbers where k once again is a whole number. So all the numbers like minus 5, minus 3, 1, 7 are known as odd numbers because they can be represented in the form of 2k plus minus 1. In simple terms the distinction between even numbers and odd numbers is that even numbers are multiple of 2 and odd numbers are non-multiples of 2. Now there are certain facts about odd and even numbers that you should remember so that you can solve the questions a bit faster. Let's discuss the points. So our first point is that if you add or subtract two odd numbers you will always get an even number. If you add or subtract an odd number and an even number then you will always get an odd number. If you subtract or add two even numbers then you will always get an even number. If you multiply two odd numbers you will always get an odd number. If you multiply an odd number with an even number you will always get an even number and lastly if you multiply two even numbers you will always get an even number. Now if you remember all these six points then you will surely solve the questions of this topic a bit faster. Let's move on to our last classification that is classification on the basis of factors. Now on the basis of factors we have two numbers that is composite and prime. So if a number has greater than two factors then the number is called a composite number and if a number has only two factors then the number is called a prime number. So the examples of composite number are, are 10, 25, 35 and so on because all these numbers have more than two factors and example of prime numbers are 2, 3, 17, 19 and so on because all these numbers have only two factors. Now, mind it that the number 1 is neither a composite number nor a prime number. The number 1 is considered as an unique number. 
Now that was all for this video and I hope that you understood all the classification of numbers and if you have any problem then you can post it down in the comment section or you can go to the channel's official Instagram or Facebook page and you can share your doubt over there. And I hope that you liked this video and if you did then please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel ASIN Academy.